You've planned out your drone shots, arrived at the location, taken the picture, and now all that's left is to edit it. Editing is the final piece of the puzzle when it comes to capturing content. And personally, it's one of my favorite parts of the entire process. You can really let your creativity flow and explore how you want viewers to react to the image. And that's what this video is all about, learning how to take the images from your drone, put them on a computer or phone, and edit them so they're ready to share with the world. So if you're ready to make your images come to life, let's get started. Hey everyone, I'm Adam with UAV Coach, and this is part four of our photo and video series. Since you've learned how to take awesome photos and videos with your drone and plan out your shots, we can finally get into the editing process. In this video, I will talk about some different apps and software that you can use for editing, whether you're looking for free or paid options, how to transfer your footage to either your phone or computer, and finally, I'll show you how I edit an image in Adobe Lightroom. With that said, let's fly in. First, let's talk about how to transfer your footage to your phone or computer for editing and sharing. For DJI users, to transfer photos and videos to your phone, you first need to turn on the drone and controller and connect your phone. Open the DJI Fly app and from the home screen or in flight screen, tap the album button or arrow button. Once you're in the album, you will see download icons on each picture and video. Just tap footage and then tap the download button in the bottom right and begin saving your footage to your phone. If you want to select multiple shots at once, click the check mark icon in the top right and then click the download icon in the bottom right and you'll see the speed of the download at the top. If you want to share your pictures or videos to social media straight away, you can click the footage and select the share icon in the top right and choose where to send it off to. But before you do this, you need to download the picture or video first. You can also see that DJI separates footage into photos, videos, and favorites, making it easier for you to go through your shots. This process should be also similar to Autel users or any other drone users. Just try and find a download icon in the app. If you prefer editing on your computer, the most common method is to take out the memory card from your drone, plug it into a memory card adapter, and then plug that into your computer via a USB port. Some computers have an SD card reader built into them, however, eliminating the need for a memory card reader. And even though most drones require a micro SD card, many memory card readers support mini SD cards. So all you have to do is insert the mini SD card into the memory card reader, and then that into your computer via USB. Before researching and filming for this video, I did this process with an extra step that all of you can hopefully avoid. My memory card reader that I've had for a few years didn't support micro SD cards. So to work around this, I had to get a micro SD card adapter. From here, I would plug the mini SD card into a micro SD card adapter and then plug the adapter into the memory card reader and then the memory card reader into the computer. If you can, please try and avoid this 100 step process and just focus on purchasing a memory card reader that supports micro SD cards you can usually find one on Amazon for around $10. So in total, get one of these memory cards off of Amazon, make sure micro SD cards are supported with them and you're good to go. And once you finally plug everything in, you can now open up your footage on your computer and start editing it. And before we jump into the editing process, let's first discuss the various apps and software available for you for enhancing your drone photos. Whether you're on a budget or willing to invest in professional tools, there's an option for everyone. First up, let's talk about some free editing apps that are great for beginners or those looking for quick edits on the go. An easy and accessible app to try out is one you probably have already, the DJI Fly app. If we make our way back to the album, you can see a create button in the bottom right. Click that and scroll through different templates. Choose one of them that you like and click download and then click apply. From here, it will allow you to select any footage that you have already saved to your device. Once you select the footage, it will create a video for you. Once the video is to your liking, you can save it to your device. Another popular choice is Snapseed. This powerful app available for both iOS and Android offers a wide range of editing tools from basic adjustments like brightness and contrast to more advanced features like selective editing and filters. Another free option for iPhone that is worth exploring is Photo Editor. Along with basic adjustments, 
adjustments, this app provides many filters for you to use, making the entire process quick and simple. If you're an iPhone user, you might already be familiar with the built-in editing capabilities of the Photos app. It offers essential editing tools and lets you fine tune your images without leaving your device. Android devices have built-in editing functions that you can use as well. Moving on to the paid software options, one standout choice is Adobe Lightroom, which I'll be showing you a demonstration of in a minute. This professional grade software is available for both desktop and mobile platforms, offering a seamless experience across devices. With Lightroom, you have unparalleled control over every aspect of your image, from exposure and colors to advanced features like lens correction and local adjustments. Currently, Adobe Lightroom is only available with a monthly subscription of $10 per month, but this does also come with Adobe Photoshop. Another paid software worth considering is Capture One. This comprehensive editing tool is highly regarded among professional photographers for its advanced color grading capabilities and exceptional raw file handling. It provides precise control over every detail of your image and allows for seamless integrations with various camera models. Capture One does offer a monthly plan, but you can decide to do a one-time payment of $299. All right, so we're in Lightroom right now, and I've pulled up some drone images that I've taken throughout the years, and we're gonna pick one and just edit it and show you uh, some of the different features that Lightroom offers. And it can be a really cool tool if you know what they do and if you can use them correctly. So let's get into it. So I have these drone images that I took near a lake a few years ago, and we're gonna select this one to edit. And as you can see right now, we are in the library module. These are all modules up here. And basically what that means is this is just like your catalog of where all of your images will be. So we imported the images. We're going to select this one and we are going to click develop. And this is just the editing tab. So click develop. All right, so now we have our image. We can zoom into it just by clicking it if we want. We can look around it, see the different details in it. I like this image a lot just because it was a really good sunset. There was actually some smoke from nearby wildfires, so it made the sky and the, and the sunset even extra orange, more saturated. And then we have this little speedboat on this other side. We have the ocean to the right. It's just a nice balanced image, but we definitely can clean it up. We can really make sure to bring the highlights back into this so we can get the color maintained in the sky and we can just change some of the colors, brighten it up, different things like that. So we have our image right here in the center. You can also see it um, list your images on the bottom little tab right here. And then we have our editing tab on the right section. And I'm mainly just going to focus on the very basic ones for this video, just to show you what different sliders do, how they can affect your image, everything like that. So first I like to start, and this is in the basic tab. There's little tabs right here, you open that up, basic tab. So I like to start in the basic tab and we're gonna actually start with the exposure slider. And the exposure slider, all that really does is it brightens the image up or it can darken the image. So we can see if we drag this to the right, it brightens it up a lot. If we drag it this way, it darkens it. So we're going to lightly, I think, brighten it up just a little bit, just for some of the shadows right here to come back. That's good. And then for contrast, Contrast just makes it, you'll see right here, darkens the shadows and it darkens the highlights. So it can really give off like a moody, dramatic look. So if we increase this all the way, it can look kind of weird. So we're just going to maybe put it to like plus 20, 24. And again, with editing, you'll see that a lot of slight adjustments is really key. You don't always have to crank sliders in one direction. So yeah, just keep it slight and play around with it. Highlights is a big one because again, we want this whole sky to give off more detail. It got a little blown out when we were taking the picture. So we're going to crank highlights down a little bit and you see how much detail is still left in the image. And that's a great thing with some of these drones and their cameras, they can preserve that detail even if you don't capture it quite correctly out in the field. So we're gonna bring this down almost all the way actually, just because it's still looking good. It's not looking too fake or anything when we brought it back, so I like that. And then with the shadows, again, this is mainly gonna affect just the shadows of the image. So we can bring this up. You see the bottom part really lighting up. And we can bring this up quite a bit, maybe to 40-ish, that looks good. The whites of the image, any kind of white bright area in the image, it's gonna brighten up a little more. So you see in the, the sky, it's gonna bring that up. We don't have to do it that much for this image, but it kind of just shows you what it does. 
We can actually darken it a little. That might help with the highlights. And then the blacks are going to cover the really dark parts of the image and then make them even darker. Or if you bring them up, they're gonna make them lighter. I kind of like to bring the blacks down usually just a little bit because it, it gives off a nice like moody contrast feel and it just, it, it balances the image out for me in a way that I like. And now we can go over to some texture and clarity. Clarity just sharpens the image up. Um, if we do too much clarity, which is a mistake I see some people do, it makes the image um, look kind of fake, which I mean, if that's your style, that's your style. But I personally don't like it that way. I like to do it maybe 15 is the most, um, just so we can sharpen some details up. Dehaze, if you have a really hazy image, it can bring back some nice detail. So you can even see in the sky, it's bringing back a lot of different detail because the sky was indeed hazy, but it's affecting our foreground, our main, the water and the freeway and stuff. So I'm gonna keep it pretty low. So now we have vibrance and saturation. And vibrance, they both mainly do the same thing. They bring out colors, they saturate colors. Vibrance, I believe is a little better just because vibrance really only attacks the colors that aren't that saturated in the image and brings those out. Saturation just boosts every color out possibly. So I really like to play around with vibrance more than saturation. I think it's a better slider in my opinion. So we can bring this up and again, not too much, but it's going to accentuate some colors that may be a little dormant in the image. We can do that. We really, I mean, I wanna capture a warm kind of feel because that's what I was feeling during this image. It was a nice it was sunset, it was uh, golden hour, golden tones, everything like that. We can bring the, the saturation up just a little bit, but I don't wanna bring too much just because I don't wanna start saturating everything. And we can go back up and to our first two sliders that I had skipped over before. This is your temperature slider and your tint slider. Temperature is whether the image is gonna be more orange or more blue. So for a sunset image, I usually like them to be warmer or some more orange because that's just how I was feeling during that. It gives off that type of mood. So we're not gonna do too much because we're gonna bring out a lot of green, honestly, from the, the lake down below, which I don't want. So I was just focusing on the, the sunset and this power plant and how it's affecting with the light and everything. It's just like that. With tint, this is going to affect whether your image is more purple or more green. So if we drag this all the way down, you see it gets a very green tone. More purple, it's gonna get a little more purple. And I really like this because like you saw in the previous, there's a lot of green in this image to start with, with the lake, and I don't want that green. I don't personally like it right there. So I'm gonna bring this up to purple. And you can see there are some purple that creep in, but I think it balances it out pretty nicely, actually. So we're gonna keep it like that. I like this so far. And right now, I think the last slider I'll go to is the tone curve. And the tone curve is just basically a big contrast slider with just more flexibility. So instead of just dragging one slider, you can drag this kind of graph and see different parts react. So if we start at the bottom here, we can drag this up and you'll see the highlights are gonna get pushed way up also with the shadows. I like to personally drag this down a bit, and just slightly down, just to give off a nice balance, okay. Then we're gonna go to the middle. I like to usually do bottom, middle, and top point. So the middle, now we can drag a little up, push those shadows up just a little bit, and you see it's really just affecting the shadows here. And again, just slight movements. We don't have to go all the way up here because that's gonna make it too extreme. So just very slight, slight movements, just like that, I think. And then we can add a third point. And you can add as many points as you want. I usually just stick with these three for the most part. These seem to do the best job. So now we can bring this down a little bit. This is really going to affect your highlights, you'll see. So it did an even better job of bringing some of the highlights back, which I love. So I like that, I like that a lot. Um, and if you press the backslash key, you can see a before and after. So this is what we started with. Very green, very dull, kind of. And this is what we ended with. And this has been, what, five, 10 minutes maybe? So you can do a lot. And this is, again, very slight adjustments for most of the sliders. And the last thing I'm gonna do, I noticed that the horizon is a little slanted. It looked a little slanted when I took the picture. We're gonna go to the crop tool up here, right here, crop tool, and press R on your keyboard. It's a shortcut. And a cool thing, instead of trying to guess, because you can rotate the image out here and, and try and guess how much or line up the lines, is actually just grab this little ruler tool or the straighten tool right here. Grab this straighten tool, click it, and now you have this little cursor right here. And what I'm gonna do is trace from the left to the right side and just trace the horizon. And then it's going to straighten the image out for me. So I think the horizon starts about here. Click and drag, and I think it, the horizon's there. So you see how angled the photo actually is. So I'm gonna click that and then de-click, and you see that it straightened it out for me. Then we can click enter. So after that, we can see that it's a little slanted, honestly, the other way. So we can go back, 
We're just fine tuning it a little bit. And now I'm going to go in and manually adjust some of it just to see where we can get a little more straight. Let's try that. And I think that looks pretty good. And then we can look down below. There are a bunch of other sliders here. There's specific colors that you can bring out. Again, we just really focused on the two basic tabs, just this basic adjustment slider and then the tone curve slider. And we got a lot out of the image before and after. So I really like it. That is an introduction to Lightroom. Of course, there are so many more things that you can dive into that I might make a video on in the future, like selective editing and really popping out certain colors that you want to pop out. And then you can press F if you want to show full screen of the image. And there it is. There's our, our final image. So I think I, I like it a lot. But this is just a brief introduction to show you. I do believe Lightroom does give out a 30-day free trial if you want to try that, if you're interested. But I've been using Lightroom and Adobe products for six, seven years. And for the most part, they're great. Editing your drone photos can truly elevate your aerial photography and allow you to express your creative vision. Whether you choose free apps or invest in professional software, remember that practice and experimentation are key to mastering the art of editing. Thanks for joining me on this journey through editing apps, transferring files, and editing with Adobe Lightroom. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos covering drone tutorials and drone news. From everyone here at the UAV Coach team, we're wishing you blue skies and safe flying. I'll see you next time.